intro quick. Uh, I wanna. I, I really am intrigued by your collection, okay. and I've seen a lot of really cool things. Now, I want to know from your personal standpoint, what to you is the absolute best shirt you have in your collection? What's the holy grail? What's the thing you're most proud of? Well, I got two kinds. Of, I got my favorite shirt thrifted. Okay. And I can show that. And it's actually right. one of my favorite shirts. So I'll get to this. that one. And uh, that is this one right here. All right. So it's it looks like it's an all over print. Um, yeah, well, well, print. tell us a bit about this one. This was made in the uh, early 90s and um, it's kind of a Jesus shirt. It's got like a message on it, like one of these people can save your soul. And it's got all this pop culture, everybody from the Beatles. It's got George Washington. Some of these people have never been printed on a shirt ever, but on this shirt. So that's what mm. kind of makes this a real rare quality shirt is because some of these people aren't printed on anything else, but they're on this. Mm. And uh, so yeah, it's got all that on the front and then on the back it's kind of like the answer sheet with just him. Jesus of course is lit up in red and says only one. So these are all just outlines of the people on the front Yeah, of the those shirt. are the exact uh, outlines okay, and if you kind of reference it through. Okay. Yeah. All right, so you found this at a thrift store? This has been a thrift store. It was, uh, I believe, a buck fifty, maybe $2. Wow. And uh, what's cool with these is uh, this is an XL, which in my opinion is the best one out there because the smaller the size gets, the more that these people are cut off because mm. it's less material and they print it on there. They don't have enough to say reach Uncle uh, Sam, okay. so he's not going to make the cut. So they had a stock print for every yeah, shirt. Yeah, they have a stock I print guess. for everyone. And if the shirt's smaller, like say you get a small that you're missing a lot of pop culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So to me, the XL is the, that's the prime one. Okay. It's going to have all your people on there. It's very interesting. I got you. So that's definitely my now, favorite. Is version. this necessarily a highly sought after shirt or is it just you personally like the uh, Well, that's not when I got it. Nobody really, there wasn't any out there. It was the kind of a one of one. Yeah. And my wife wore it to a pop-up we set out and everybody kind of slept on it and they were like asking me what my favorite some of my favorite thrifted shirts were, and I was like, well, one of my most recent favorites is this one right here. And then they started looking at me like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And they started freaking out because I guess they realized what it was. Yeah. And then they were offering a buy from me or whatever, but I'm not selling this one. Mm -hmm. And uh, then after that, everybody was trying to get these. And I saw them. They started popping up on Instagram. People were getting them. Okay. And uh, so now they're kind of a thing. Yeah, the best shirt I ever purchased would be this, this, this one over here. This is a... Uh, it's by the artist Michael Rios. He's a... Uh, He's actually a designer for uh, Santana, the artist, the, mu the musician. Okay. He kind of did a lot of his uh, cover work on his like albums, and he would like put art on his uh, instruments, and then the clothes he would wear would all be uh, Rios designs. So this is a one of one, of course. Like he, he didn't mass produce this. This is just one that he actually made for a guy that I got it off of, and he signed it down here. It's kind of hard to see a signature, ah, but there's okay, a Michael Rios signature there. And the uh, guy I bought this from, I guess he didn't really know what he had because he was actually going to let it go, but he worked at uh, Jersey's. He worked at the Jersey's in uh, Alexandria City. Mm. And when this particular uh, blend of shirt was coming out, like this is a real thick, very quality uh, cotton, and the artist Michael Rios hit him up and said, hey, I heard y'all got this new shirt line coming out. Would you mind sending me some so I can see how my art kind of yeah. works on that? Yeah. So they sent him a box of these uh, blank white tees and sure enough, he sent him back one of these, uh, fully painted up, and uh, it was kind of like a thank you. He had it signed and everything. Yeah. So is this actually, because from the tag, it doesn't look very old. What do you think the date is on this? Uh, the guy I got it from, he was working there, I think, late 90s, early 2000s. I think he said he got this particular one around, around 2000. Okay. So that's okay. about 19 so years old. Is the, is the artist still alive and does he still he's, make shirts? He is still alive. I heard he's got cancer and uh, he's not doing too well. So I don't know if he's really making many mm. as of right now, but he is still making some stuff. And of course, whenever he passes, I mean, these become like yeah, yeah. even rare because he's not yeah. putting new ones out there. And that's just kind of how art works. Okay. So this will just only go up. Like this is never for sale. It's kind of more of an art piece that I'll just hang on my wall. I'm eventually, yeah. I guess, going to frame it and maybe put it up down here. I paid, I ended up paying a uh, hundred dollars for that, which is probably the most mm. I've ever paid for a shirt, but yeah. I just couldn't stop. I mean, I couldn't help it. I was yeah, like, this yeah. is something that I know is going to be historical. It's going to be a piece of art. It's almost like, you know, a Van Gogh piece or a yeah. Monet or whatever. Like that's what it's going to, when he dies and kind of like his legacy starts to snowball, that's what this is going to be. So I was like, that's kind of priceless to me. To me, that's yeah. a small price to pay. And uh, yeah, it seems I, like you got to steal for it. Is that do you feel like that he let that go for way too cheap? Oh, he definitely did. Like, those shirts right now, people are paying on the low end like $250, $300 mm -hmm. for them, and okay. they're getting pretty good deals at that. I think I wouldn't pay that. 
Yeah. But uh, I'm, I'm always looking for those. Like if anybody's want to trade them or something, I'll definitely trade for them. Okay. That's my favorite, and I think that's the best one I have personally. Uh, now I've noticed in here you have you know clothing items, yeah. but it looks like you also have a lot of other things, uh, like oh, yeah. miscellaneous stuff. So where you, let's look at some of it. Uh, over here I see you have two. Looks like Star Wars Episode One life size characters. To, well, where did you get these, and what exactly are these? Um, these are actually for a promotional for Episode One. Uh, I believe this one was a blockbuster. And this one, I guess, would have been at maybe like grocery stores or gas stations around like the uh, episode one merchandise, like maybe the Coke or the Pepsi cans and Mountain mm -hmm. Dews, all that stuff, which, yeah. you know, I collected that back in the day as well. But these are, uh, I've read there's like a thousand of these made and uh, mm -hmm. picked these up, uh, I think it was on the Craigslist or something. Okay. I got a decent deal on both those and uh, love them. I'm a big episode one fan. I know it gets a lot of flag. People think it's yeah. kind of lame, but... I think it was uh, George Lucas's last, like, uh, hoorah. Really. Yeah, yeah. They look sweet, man. The details are through the roof. Yeah, there's actually a beard here. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of like bris kind of like toothbrush or uh, hairbrush bristles. Yeah, yeah. It's got the little uh, accessories. The clothing can actually come off. Mm. Okay. Uh, let's look over here. I see this um, Ghostbusters car. Now, this is really cool. Is this a actual vintage original? And what is it exactly? I don't know what it is. Yeah, this is a license for the real Ghostbusters cartoon show in the 80s. And uh, this is actually a one side of a bed. There's two sides of this and it makes mm. like a kid's bed. And uh, I've got a, several of these. And I, my friend kind of had the idea to mount it up here on like a TV mount. Yeah, yeah. So he helped me with that and we got it up there. I think it looks pretty cool. Yeah. But uh, yeah, those are pretty rare. I don't really see many of those out there. Um, okay. They're pretty neat though. And those were actually found in a, uh, like I think, storage unit. Some guy got them from a storage unit. I got them mm -hmm. off of him. Dang. Nice. Uh, okay, so let's um, let's see what else do we have over here. I've noticed that you have a lot of these lockers, like uh, old sports lockers from maybe, I don't know, 80s, 90s? Yeah, these uh, are uh, all early 90s. Uh, this is actually a brand that makes like little storage things that would go next to your pool. Like I think it's mm -hmm. Suncast. But they made these lockers for, I guess, kids' rooms, and they're uh, pretty neat. I'm eventually going to, I guess, let my kids use them for storage. Yeah. yeah. Right now, i just got hats in there or, yeah. you know, just miscellaneous stuff. And I noticed it looks like there's NFL lockers and NBA lockers. Are there other sports available? Yeah, they actually have NHL and uh, they have... MLB, and I don't have either of those. Okay. I've just got mostly NFLB. I picked all these up at like flea markets or uh, yard sales. And I think I got two at thrift stores. Yeah, it looks like you have quite a few. Are these a common item that you see, or? Uh, that's what's item? weird. Like, uh, me and my wife talk about this like thrifting portal a lot, where this portal opens up and just shoves stuff out at you. Yeah, yeah. And I don't really see these much, but over the last, I guess it's been really the last year I've gotten. I guess, uh, what, about 10 of, or 8 of them. God, I got 8 man. of these in like one yeah. year and then I hadn't found any since. Mm. Okay. So it's just kind of the weird anomalies of uh, thrifting. Yeah, yeah. And I couldn't help but to notice, but uh, down here I'm seeing these. Now okay. these look very intriguing. Uh, I'm not really sure what to make out of these. Uh, what are these, these? are, uh, I'm not 100% sure what to make of these either. I haven't really seen any like this, but this is actually a Naughty by Nature Hip Hop Array is what it says here. Yeah. It's all Rasta print. Uh, the tags are one size fits all, made in USA. So I know they're vintage. This is probably early 90s. Uh, maybe you could get these at like a concert or like outside in the parking lot. Mm, yeah. But these are another one of one. Like I've never seen another one like that. You normally see wrap tees, but not like shorts or anything. Yeah. So these are kind of special. And these are actually thrifted as well. These yeah. are like $3. So uh, right now, we've looked at your shirts, we've looked at your shoes, we've looked at your favorite shirts. Uh, we have not looked at your hats. So do you, do you mind showing us some of your hats, your best hats? Uh, I don't see many hats around here. Where are your yeah, hats we'll at? To, uh, <laughs> well, I got my hats stored somewhere else, but we can, okay, actually, okay. We can take a look at those as well. All right, cool. for sure. All right. All right, so we're now at the hat collection, and these are, I'm not sure, are these all of your hats, or? No, this is like a few that I kind of sifted through. I've got hundreds and hundreds of hats, but I just yeah. kind of wanted to get some noteworthy ones. Okay, yeah, yeah different styles and stuff. Yeah. Uh, it looks like there's a diverse uh, style group here. Um, so I'm noticing this one first. This looks like a, uh, a UK, I guess this is a painter's hat, and it says, Long Live Rock and Roll. Now, do you know anything about this? Have you researched it? 
Uh, I've tried to do research on this. I can't find anything like it. There's not another one like it out there. Yeah. To my knowledge, I would think this was maybe sold at a concert in the UK back in the 80s. Okay. Maybe some UK based rock band. I'm not sure. Mm. But uh, I would say that's very rare. It's, like you said, it's the painter style, which is kind of neat. Yeah. And wouldn't know what to value it at. I would think it'd be worth, you know, upwards of 100. Who knows? But I, I mean, you just can't value it. So that's yeah, just, yeah. if I can't find anything, I'll sit on it. Because okay, I don't know anything about it, but I know it's worth something, so I just like keeping mm. it. Yeah, it looks like you have another painter set here. Now, I've noticed that a lot of uh, old, uh, nah, I don't know if it's a lot, but you'll definitely see old hats come in the painter style. Now, was this, were these made for painters to wear, or were these like a fashion thing? And no, yeah, these weren't made for painters. They were just, I guess, for some reason, that was seen as cool at the time. I don't mm. know why, maybe yeah. painting was a big thing. I don't know. But yeah, they make these. And this is actually interesting with a snapback on yeah. the back, which you don't really see with the painters. Yeah, and the bill looks to be a bit uh, shallow. Yeah, it's kind of a well. shallow yeah. bill, which is uh, yeah. also different. But uh, yeah, they, people would wear these, flip them up, call them flip up hats. It was just kind of the trend mm. back in the 80s. They kind of faded away, though. You yeah, don't see I, I love those hats because they had the uh, the top print on it. So yeah, it's like, yeah, the, yeah, yeah it's very nice. You don't see that on hats. Uh, next, I see we have a just looks like a classic trucker style hat here with the mesh on the back. Now, me personally, uh, I know when Ashton Kutcher kind of brought these on the scene, mm -hmm. they really blew up and everybody wanted them. But it seems like, and I could be wrong, but it seems like they've kind of faded off. Is is that the case with trucker hats, or are they still something that's? Uh, I guess as far as maybe mainstream style goes, they have faded. But with collectibles and like collectors in general, they really seek some of these. Like. Mm -hmm. These big patch ones right here, oh, this has got a big patch. And this is a NASCAR, it's a uh, Lake Speed, which you don't really ever see his merchandise. He was more of an obscure driver. Mm. And uh, yeah, this would this would definitely get a lot of attention from collectors of uh, all kinds. And as you can see here, it's actually got the original price tag on there that's from the Hall of Fame in uh, Talladega, Alabama. Mm. So that makes that, of course, even more rare and sought after. Yeah. So this would actually be, I mean, it would it would get a lot of attention. I know I know you're not into those. I'm not necessarily into the trucker hat really either, but yeah. a lot of collectors like those. Okay. Um, over here I see you have some sports hats. Now this is one of your classic style. It seems like there's a few styles that they have with the sports hats from the early 90s or whatever. And this is one of them. What do they call this right here? Um, this is actually called a splash because as you see it almost looks like that's liquid kind of splashing over the side of it. Yeah, yeah. And that's, yeah, that's one of the trends. They also have, uh, I've got one here somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is another style they had. These are uh, called Shark Tooth, because as you can see, it kind of almost looks like a shark tooth on there. Yeah. And these were kind of real big, like you said, the 90s. And now they've kind of resurged and kind of came back and people really after these. I think splashes seem to be harder to find than the Shark Tooth, but they're both real cool when you find these in mm -hmm. a thrift store. Yeah, because I've always noticed, uh, they make a lot of these, aren't a lot of these made of wool? Like yeah, they are. Yeah, They actually have jackets with their shark tooth uh, pattern on there, okay. even splash ones I've seen. Golly. So that's neat. I had never found one of those. Yeah, and their uh, logo, what is it, Logo 7? That's Logo that, Athletic. Oh, Logo Athletic, yeah. I the used to have a ones. Chargers one that my friend's dog chewed up. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, so over here, let's look over here. We have a few more. We have a, uh, looks like a Hill Figure Athletics gear. Um, what is the date on something like that? And um, this one I would put in early 90s. It's got the old Tommy Hill figure tag. As you can see, it's made in USA. Mm. Um, little terry cloth. It's got the pull string. And this uh, this line, the Hill Figure Athletic, that kind of came out in the early 90s. It was maybe uh, their yeah. answer to like uh, Polo Sport or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And this is what they call a five panel hat because as you can see, there's four panels here yeah. and then a fifth panel right there and that's where they have the logo and these uh are very sought after as well this like this would be mm -hmm. i would say around 200 dollars value on oh, this wow. and right. this was thrifted just in a pile and it was all dirty and i cleaned it up yeah so and, and as you can see the difference in these bills like you're talking about this one has a short bill but this one here actually has kind of an extra long bill like they yeah, kind of call these yeah, like yeah. a long bill too and there's yeah. a lot of these sporty ones are made like that okay. so that's kind of interesting yeah. it's it's more waterproof very cool hat mm -hmm. very nice now I see this right here. We'll look at a couple more. Uh, I see this. Now this is a funky looking hat. Um, yeah. Uh, it, it looks like it's a Kentucky Fried Chicken hat, but you have the poof on the top and the bill is almost non-existent. Now, do you think that this was like an employee hat or what, what do you think this was? Uh, that's a good question. I feel like it could have been maybe a promotional hat or maybe employee. I don't know. I know I got it from an old woman who was, her husband owned a bunch of KFCs. Mm. 
And this is actually called a palm hat. It's got the little pom pom on top. Okay. And these are very special because this is a Louisville manufacturer. It's actually made in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, these that brand turned into the K product, and this, as far as collectability goes, a lot of people are after these uh, Louisville mm -hmm. manufacturers. You kind of know them from their uh, iconic. See how that snap on the back is real skinny. If you compare it to like your typical. And that's uh, that's a trait with the Louisville. You see, I'm talking about the the width of it's not. Oh yeah, 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 yes, yes. So that's like yes. a trait with the Louisville uh, manufacturer. Okay. All of them are going to be like that. Yeah. Um, and yeah, these are. I mean, once again, I haven't found any of these out there. I know I had a cat hat that was Louisville manufactured denim, and it sold, you know, three fifty. Mm. And okay. I, and people say I undersold the heck out of that, but I was fine with it because yeah. I paid, you know, two dollars for it. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, this one is. I mean, I don't know the price of that. I would think the palm ones sometimes bring in a lot. I think mm -hmm. that'd be maybe over a hundred dollars, and I got another one that's also Louisville manufacturing. It's just uh, yeah. Now I noticed the interior of this one uh, is kind of chipping away. It was that foam, and you yeah, see that—that's yeah. a common thing with trucker hats, right? Yeah, it definitely is. Because a lot of that. times they'll put that foam there to kind of keep the shape. Yeah, yeah. And I hate it. You'll get it, and it just pour all over yeah. you. Pour in your car. You breathe it in. You don't know if you're gonna get cancer <laughs> or what. So, so when the foam is just gone and it's flabby, do people they don't want the hat anymore? Uh, depending on the hat. I mean, if it's like one of those collectible hats, like I was saying, they're still buying them. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. But that cat hat somehow, once again, it was stored right. It had all the foam intact. Yeah. It was fun. Okay. But yeah, a lot of times you just get all the foam out and you just sell it. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to look at one more hat here. And it's this, uh, this hat. It's a, it looks like it's a vintage ET hat. Now this looks kind of like, what, is, what do you call this design? Is this like a half truck or what is this? Oh, uh, yeah, I don't know if that's like a quarter mesh or what, or... Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't know what you call it, but yeah, it's kind of a kid's hat. It's got, you know, it's an 82. We really like anything ET. Mm. Found this at like a little antique store and uh, had a good... Uh, but, uh, yeah, that's okay. neat. And also, I do have this. I don't know if you saw it, but... It's a 90s fish hat. It's kind of a... Uh, kind of big cult following of fish. Grateful mm. Dead. Um, they've got a lot of followers. And this is a vintage made in USA. It's probably early 90s. Okay. And I thrifted that one. I, th I think that's kind of cool too. I got you. But now, uh, this is something that I find on a lot of old hats. I think you might want to look at this. It's the, it is the uh, the made in USA thing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just like that big bold print. And I've noticed that a lot of vintage hats have yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of uh, one of the traits. Yeah, yeah. Mind, so. I guess that's a dead giveaway. All right, man. Well, I think that pretty much does it. Oh, actually, we do have this last one. I did want to look at this because I didn't even know anything about this. And for me, this uh, kind of blew my mind. It's a, this is a CFL hat, which is the Canadian Football League. And the team is the Birmingham Barracudas. Now, what I, I didn't even know that existed. Well, what is this? Um, yeah, this is, uh, they existed, I think, for one season, maybe. So it's real hard to find their gear. Mm. Like, this is a real rare hat. And it's, I think it's dead stock. It's very good condition. Yeah. Um, and it's very interesting the way it splits in color. Yeah, also, yeah, even, yeah. like, the snaps, like, 50-50 yeah, on there. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, very cool hat, very rare. It's got the CFL license tag in there. Yeah. Uh, this is once again not for sale. I like any of that local Birmingham yeah. stuff. Very, real cool. Now, is this a, a common design on a bunch of old sporting hats? The uh, strap that goes down the side? Like I've seen a couple. Like, it's not really common. and I've, I've never seen that with the yeah, snap, yeah. snap yeah. on the back. But yeah, very rare. Cool hat. I enjoyed that. I'm glad you pointed it out. All right, so I guess that's gonna do it for um, this venture. And we saw we saw your t-shirts, we saw your hats, we saw your shoes. I mean, we saw a lot of really cool stuff. I'm sure there's a ton of stuff oh, we yeah. weren't able to cover. Uh, but what we did see was really impressive. And I enjoyed it, man. Thank you for letting us come in here. Yeah, no. See your personal collection. I know that's not something that a lot of people will let people do. No, but, definitely, uh, we're one of the few. So. Yeah, but yeah, and we really enjoyed it, man. Uh, how do we find, how, do, how are people gonna find you? Do you have uh, uh Yeah, I got an Instagram, Mosquito Heads, and I post a lot of my good stuff on there. Okay. And uh, you can also catch me at a pop-up either in Atlanta or Birmingham usually. Mm -hmm. And I've got a podcast, Vintage Talk Show. You can listen to that if you want some more vintage content. So. Okay. Awesome, man. Well, thank yeah. you. All right. Thank I you so much, man. man. All right. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed, and we will see you all on the next one. Da -da.